Hi everyone, I'm excited to be here. Uh, it's hard time for everyone, just after lunch and just before the end of the day, so let's try to make it fun and interesting. Um, so a while ago, me and my family went on a weekend uh, to Mount Hermon, and on the way we saw those logos on the Waze map, like McDonald's or different gas stations. And as someone who came all the way from Tel Aviv, packed with three kids in the back seat. It was actually quite useful. So today I'm going to tell you about how we select those logos that we present on the Waze map. Um, I am Reut, and apart from my other role that involves packing and unpacking three kids from the car, I lead the ads and monetization data science team at Waze. Um, among other things, we are responsible for ranking ads, those logos. Um, I did my master's in predictive analytics in the University of Chicago, and I came back. Um, when I started at Waze, it was after many years of working with data, mostly in the online advertising domain. But it was very quickly that I found how different the data and the challenges are from what I used to know. So usually, the problem of ad serving involves some real estate, like a web page, the users who visit this web page, the advertisers who want to display their ads to these users. In the ads industry, we call them target audience. How nice is it to think about ourselves as targets? Uh, but the thing is that at ways, our targets are moving. The user is constantly on the go, and the map which is our real estate, keeps changing. So let's get ourselves familiar with what Waze ads are. Um, Waze let advertisers put their businesses on the map. This is how we make money. They pay us to put their logos on the Waze screen so that people like me can know about them and, we, and maybe even make a stop and unpack three kids into their place. Um, Waze is a very unique advertising platform because unlike other platforms, it, it's not, it, it not only knows where you are, but it also knows where you're heading to and in which roads. We have unique targeting options like distance from the route and destination type. We have several ad formats, but the most prominent one is called branded pins. These are the logos that I told you about. Now, why should you care about it? <laughs> uh, because it's a really hard problem to select those logos. And if you're here, you probably like hard problems and you want to understand how to solve them. So just before diving into the problem, uh, let me explain a few basic concepts so you understand how we display those ads. Um, so we have the mobile client, or just the client. You can think about it as your device or other devices that use Waze. And we have the server, and this is where the more complex cal calculations are happening. Uh, you can think about it as a remote, uh, remote computer with a lot of processing power. And uh, if you think about your device, it's a very small computer, right? So if we did all these uh, large calculations on it, Waze wouldn't be able to respond quickly enough and it would take a lot of your battery. Now, we know that it already takes uh, your battery but and <laughs> we're working on improving it, but it's definitely a trade-off. Um, so these two friends are constantly exchanging information between themselves. So a drive starts and basically we want to display those ads the server um, does the complex cal calculations and send over those candidate pins to the client friend. And then the client displays them on the screen if they fall within the screen boundaries and up to a cap of four pins in a screen. So why actually is it a hard problem? Um, you could say, why not? I mean, we know the whole route uh, right from the beginning of the drive. You could say, okay, why not just sending a lot of pins to the client 
and whenever it can display one, it will. So the answer is that there are, first of all, we don't always know um, your whole route, right? Because users don't always follow these instructions. But even if they did, there would have been so many pins and it would have been so hard for the client to do all these calculations and maybe by the time it does, you will have no battery left and no pins to display. So that's not a solution. So we said, OK, let's try to make it uh, smaller. Let's try to look at two minutes road segment and send a much shorter list of pins, pin candidates to display, up to 50, up to 50 candidates. Um, in a two, two minutes time horizon, we know pretty good where you're going to be. Um, and so that's what we did. The, ser the server did the more complex calculations of considering the advertising budgets, the user, the, the, the ad relevance, and also, and then when it sent the most appropriate pins to the client, it only selected those that were the closest to the user. But the user is moving, right? So before I explain it, you ask about the trapez, right? Um, if you see the top horizon is much wider than the, bo than the bottom part of the screen. Uh, next time you use Waze, check it out. For now, just believe me. Uh, and back to our moving target. So the user is moving and the red pins that we see are those that the, the server sent to the client because they were the closest to the user. Um, but many of them cannot be displayed while the gray ones weren't even sent to the client to begin with. So we see that there are many missing opportunities and much to improve upon. And now you can ask, okay, but why not sending the pins that are the closest to the route rather than closest to the user, right? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, and the answer is that even in those two minutes, we don't really know what you're going to see on your screen. Why? Because some drivers drive very slowly, either they just do or because of the traffic conditions, and some other drivers drive much faster and if you take a turn, then the zoom level changes, and also in other cases it happens. And so we see that even in those two minutes time horizon, it's really hard to determine exactly what you're going to see. So I hope that by now I could convince you that this is a hard problem and that traditional engineering efforts can't really work that well. Okay, so let's uh, state clearly what the problem is. We want to be able to estimate the pin's display probability in the next two minutes to fall within your screen boundaries. Uh, if we're able to do it, we can rank them accordingly and then display many more pins on the Waze map, deliver much more value to our advertisers who would be able to show more of their ads and increase Waze revenue. And what should it look like? So we should have the data input that involves the current state at the beginning of, this, of these two minutes. Uh, we want to put it inside some model, which should output a display probability for every pin to fall within the screen boundaries. So let's start with the data and features and see what they look like. What actually do we need to know? Uh, we want to know the next road segments that the user is going to cross, the candidate pin's locations, the current user location, the current screen boundaries, and we take this data and we transform it into some features. So we have many of them, but let's review the most important ones. Uh, we take the distance of the pin from the screen and from the user, we take the distance of the pin from the closest point on the route and the time it would get, it would take for the user to reach to that point, considering the current speed and traffic conditions. 
And uh, we use some device attributes, like the screen ratio, the device type, and also the current visible radius uh, on the screen. So, so far for the features that we use, and especially the important ones. But what about the labels? How do we get those? And what are they actually? So, what ha what's happening is that for those 50 pins that were sent to the client every two minutes, each one that gets displayed will be marked as positive. And if it wasn't displayed, we will mark it as negative. And this is how we get our labeled data set. Um, all right, so we have the features, we have the labels. Uh, let's, uh, let's review the model itself. We chose to use deep neural network. Uh, the main reasons for choosing it was that the data set was very large. Uh, the connections between the features and between the features and the label were pretty complex, but mostly because it outperformed uh, most other, all, all the other methods that we've tried. Uh, we have four output layers that are basically four display probabilities for every pin. First is the display probability for the first five seconds out of the two minutes. Then the display probability in the next six to 35 minutes. The third for the 35 uh, seconds, did I say minutes? Seconds. Um, 35 seconds and above, and the last one for the probability that it won't be displayed at all. Why do we need those four probabilities? Again, we want to be more precise. We want the client to think um, as less as possible um, and to catch the most relevant uh, ones at every period inside these two minutes. So when we come to predict every candidate pin would get these four display probabilities. Now, in every request, we have hundreds of candidate pins. And as you can remember, we have these requests every two minutes within a drive. And you can probably imagine that there are many drives with ways. So we better uh, handle that right. Uh, in terms of performance requirements, um, we, we, need to, we need to support up to 30,000 requests per second. And again, there are hundreds of uh, candidates in every request. So up to almost 4 million predictions every second. Um, ideally, every request should be answered in less than 100 milliseconds the wor in the worst case. And the traffic peaks are different in different regions. So these were like the performance considerations that we had to account for. So we better have a robust and scalable architecture to support all that. And let's, uh, let me walk you through what this architecture looked like. So we have the online uh, part, which is basically where the drives are happening. And we have the offline part. Um, in the online part, we have our uh, client. And every time it displays one of those logos, those pins, it would log, uh, the, it would log it into PubSub. Our infrastructure is based on Google Cloud Platform, GCP. PubSub is the messaging service for that. So we log, the, we log uh, those pins that were displayed. And there are many drives, many pins that were displayed. And so every few hours, we collect this data and put it all inside a BigQuery table. Then we have those features that we extract, the, the ones that I just told you about. And we process them uh, using Dataflow, which is a scalable Python solution um, on GCP. And then we train the model using Vertex AI, which is the main um, machine learning training uh, service. And after we train the model and validated, uh, validated it, we do that every once in a while, um, we want to deploy it into an online server to be available all the time to rank uh, pin candidates to be served. So at this time, the offline part can uh, take a rest. 
Uh, so back to the online part where we have the, the, the drives and now the client wishes to display more ads. It asks for the server, uh, bring me some uh, pin candidates. This server would use our deployed model uh, to rank the first pool of candidates. And our model will do that and send it back to him. Uh, the server will then send these candidates back to the client and at the same time, we'll log them back into PubSub, so we won't have only uh, those that were displayed, but also the candidates that weren't necessarily displayed. And then we're back to our client who can display those pins, log them, and so on and forth, and so on and forth. It will happen all over again. <sighs> so, was it worth the effort? Why did, it, why did we do it for? So when we ran an A-B test uh, to see the impact, we found that on average, we saw 12% more pins displayed per session. Um, that was an incredible improvement. And again, clearly it's a great value to the advertiser and definitely great value to Waze uh, revenue. We managed to account for all the. Um, uh, to, to account, we, we, today we account for 99.8% of the predictions um, requests in real time. Um, so let's try to wrap up what we've had here. We had our server who had to rank pins to be sent to the client using a few, uh, a few ranking layers. In the bottom, we have the advertiser's budget, then the, uh, the ad relevance, and on, on top of it, we have the display probability, which is what we focused on today. So uh, the server sent this, uh, the, these pins candidate to the client, who then can display them on the Waze map and hope that someone like me will stop and unpack three kids into some place. So um, clearly we have a lot to improve upon, but I think that at this point, we can say that we have reached our destination. Thank you so much for listening.